Demon is coming on now. Hi, Dr. Evans. How are you? Hi, Uma. So nice to see you. It's awesome to see you. I know it's early there, so thank you so much for making the time to join the series. I'm excited to see you as always. Well, it's great to see you as well. Happy October. Happy October. So, you know, this series, uh, Dr. Eamon, is related to World Mental Health Day. And, you know, we've talked about this before, but destigmatization of mental health tends to be something we're still dealing with in the U.S. and other countries. And I would love to start off just by asking you how you think we can handle that in the U.S. and how we can think through how to help people in our families, our loved ones, maybe a co-worker who may be struggling and how to help them obtain, obtain the care that they need. Well, I think the first thing to talk about is we're working on the wrong paradigm. Uh, mm -hmm. I hate the term mental illness. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it shames people. It's it stigmatizing. Mm -hmm. And it's wrong. These are brain health issues that steal people's minds. And if you get your brain right, so for example, eating like mm -hmm. you talk about in uh, the brain on food, then your mind is so much better. But yes. as long as we're going to see these as mental, when, when you call someone mental, you're mm. shaming them. Mm. If you call them a brain, you're elevating mm -hmm. them. So the first thing we need to do is start to change the discussion away from mental illness to mm -hmm. brain health. And like that. If, then we'll start protecting people's brains. Mm -hmm. Uh, which yeah. is so important because what a lot of people don't know at Amon Clinics, I have 10 clinics around the country, mm -hmm. uh, traumatic brain injury is a major cause of psychiatric mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. But if you allow children to play football or hit soccer balls with their head or engage in potentially brain damaging sports, what you're doing is you're increasing the incidence of mental right. health problems. Right. Absolutely. And I love, I love what you said because I've been thinking uh, that the new DSM-5 TR is about to release. And, um, you know, I don't agree that it covers, uh, covers people who actually need the help. There are many people who fall into uh, categories that don't exist in the classification and I was thinking about that recently. So I really appreciate what you're saying because one of the things that's biggest in destigmatizing mental health is to remove the shame. And when we use the word mental, you're absolutely right. People associate that with something negative. Whereas we talk about brain health, brain mind, you know, um, nutritional psychiatry, uh, nutrition and your brain health. I think it's a better way to start that discussion. I find that when I have a conversation about food and nutrients, it's an easy uh, conversation starter to understanding how someone is feeling emotionally. Whether or not they need medications, that's a separate issue, but it's an easy way to sort of begin the discussion. Uh, I think food's probably responsible for 30% of the mental health problems in the United States. If we I just think. got people's brain properly nourished, um, I published three studies that show as your weight goes up, the size and function of your brain goes down. down. And given that 72% of Americans are overweight mm -hmm. and 42% of us are obese, um, and, and all the, re you know this, research shows that people that are not healthy, physically, obesity, diabetes, heart Mm -hmm. uh, hypertension, heart disease, they have a higher incidence of anxiety, yes. of depression, of sleep apnea, all things that damage the brain. Right. I, I absolutely agree with you. And one of the things that um, emerged during COVID was that 88% of Americans have poor metabolic health. Um, you know, they have at least one parameter that's, that's off, which is also speaking to those who succumb to COVID because of pre-existing conditions, which brings us back to metabolic health and how that is linked to inflammation in the body and the brain, and then back to how we're eating. 
because one of the, in, the, one of the ways we can intervene, you know, we can't change our genetics. Uh, we can certainly live healthier lives and do other, make other lifestyle changes. But one of the things that we can do is we can eat differently. And it's something that is people overlook because they think it's too simple. Um, and I also think there's a tendency in our culture to rely on a medication or a quick fix, which is another thing where the paradigm needs to shift. The people who absolutely need something and it's life-saving, yes. But if, if there are other ways that you can use and other methods to improve your uh, brain health, that's, that's another way to go. I absolutely agree. And, you know, yet another version of the DSM. It, it's really not substantially changed since three. So there's no, six, now almost seven versions of the right. DSM. From two to three, that was a big radical shift. But it's basically been pretty much the same since then. Um, yeah. But it's a lot of money for the American Psychiatric Association without changing the paradigm and our outcomes are literally no better than they were in the 1950s. In fact, there's a higher percentage of the American population on psychiatric drugs now than at mm -hmm. any time mm. in mm -hmm. our history. And does that mean we're like way more messed up? Um, no, I think it's, it's a marketing issue uh, that we, we need to rethink. Right. I, and I, I, I agree with you. You know, I feel, I feel as though um, the DSM-5 is, it, it's a classification, but I feel that it, it's in line with the way that psychiatry is practiced in, uh, in the U.S. because it's hospital-based uh, or even private practice-based. But, you know, we have to use codes that work for insurance. We have to use diagnostic categories that work for that. Anyway, that aside, I mean, that's, that's just kind of uh, a point I wanted to make. But that aside, what do, you, what do you think are your favorite tips to share with someone who is not feeling, um, you know, their, their best emotionally, and they want to start their journey of just starting to eat healthier? I know that I have certain things that I ask people to do, but I always love hearing what you do. So um, I have a new book coming out in March called You Happier the seven neuroscience secrets of feeling good based on your brain type. And quickly, if you want to feel better, uh, yeah. you got to get your brain right. That's number one. Optimize the physical functioning of your brain. And just ask yourself this little question every day. Is this good for my brain or bad for it? So when you're coming to have a, a, a drink of alcohol, it's bad for your brain. Or smoking pot, it's bad for your brain or eating um, frozen yogurt, it's bad for your brain because of all the sugar. Um, and then know your type. You know, one of the things our imaging work has taught us is everybody's a bit different. We have balanced brains, spontaneous brains, persistent brains. Um, so I talk about how to know your type. And then I believe everybody uh, should supplement their brain. As a society, we have big deficiencies in vitamin D and magnesium right. and choline. So mm -hmm. multiple vitamin, fish oil, right. probiotic could just be so helpful for us. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. And then four, which you will love, is only love food that loves you back. You're in a relationship with food. And most right. people are basically in an abusive relationship. With they food. love mm -hmm. food that hurts right. them mm -hmm. rather than serves them. Um, and then these little tiny habits, like start every day with today is going to be a great day. That mm -hmm. way you direct your mind to what's right rather than what's wrong. Right. I put myself to bed every night with what went well today right. just mm -hmm. to review the world. And it actually sets your dreams up to be more positive. Mm -hmm. Um and I love it. It's like going on a little treasure hunt because, you know, you and I are busy and often great things happen and you just don't really pay attention to them. And mm -hmm. you can control your mood by controlling the direction of your thought. And then if you really want to be happy, notice what you like about other people more than mm -hmm. what you don't. If you really want to be joyful, 
rather than criticize your right. husband or criticize your right. wife. Find something you like about it. Like about because that. you're That's reinforcing right. the That's... behaviors you like mm -hmm. or the behaviors you dislike by what you pay attention to. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I like the way that you frame that because I do feel that, you know, when we criticize, it, it's all about, you know, your thoughts, thoughts are things, right? I, I actually firmly believe that. So when we are looking at the negative side of things, when you're appreciating the negative qualities about someone, that's what your brain remembers. And that's the cycle that you're starting. And we have control over that. So I think that it's, it's about how we choose to start our day, how we choose to end our day. And food is very much a part of that conversation and good nutrition. I'm especially enjoying your book. So thank you for writing that. And we look forward to its launch next year. Um, I think the, the tips around feeling happier are, are, are super helpful for people because, you know, uh, there's, like I said, there's a tendency to be overly prescriptive in this country. Um, you know, even in this conversation, as I'm seeing the chat and hearing you talk, people are, uh, well, firstly, Jim is here. So hi, hi, Jim. It's great to see you. But um, as people are talking about, is there a treat? And are we cheating? Uh, you know, what are we eating and kind of stuff? I think this is the, this is the wrong conversation, guys. You know, it's, it doesn't matter what Dr. Eamon and I are eating. We just, we are talking about the good principles. And if you want to go out and cheat and eat the wrong thing, that's your brain, right? It's, it's about having ownership and autonomy. And that's what nutrition does. It gives us the choices. You could go eat funnel cake or you could decide I'm going to eat something healthier today. And it doesn't matter what I eat every day. I share that all the time. I talk about it. But it, th that autonomy is very powerful. And nutrition is no longer something we do outside. It's part of lifestyle, right? And where so many physical conditions are, are related to poor diet, it, 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 it's sort of a no-brainer, you know? It's a no-brainer to start doing something different. Well, it's a big brainer. It's a no brainer to continue to do what you're doing. Because then um, in my book last year, Your Brain is Always Listening, Listening. I talk about the bad habit dragons. And the yes. worst of all the bad habit dragons is the oblivious dragon, where you just really never think yeah. about what's going in your body or what's going on your body, right? Toxic food or toxic products. You know, J&J mm -hmm. &J got hit last year. They had to actually pull some of their sunscreen because mm -hmm. you're taking sunscreen to avoid skin cancer, but it's giving you other kinds of cancer. Problems. And so yeah. we have to, you know, whatever goes in your body or on your body, it becomes who you are. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, I just want people to be more thoughtful. And it's basically this right. question. Is mm -hmm. this good for my brain or mm -hmm. is it bad for it? And you mm -hmm. choose good, not because you should. You choose mm -hmm. good because you love yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you love your family. You know, I deal mm -hmm. with so many families who one of their parents has dementia. And right. they don't want it. And anybody, yes. all, all of us who've had a loved one with dementia knows what a disaster mm -hmm. that is on their family. And I turned 67 this year. But, you know, if I want to prevent having Alzheimer's, and Uma, did you know that if you live to 85, you have a 50% chance of having Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. Wow. So that means if you're blessed to live to 85, you will play Russian roulette where right. you put three bullets in the chamber. And mm -hmm. I'm not okay with that. Mm. Uh, but it means now, and for me, for decades, it's, you really have to think about the health of your brain because it doesn't just start at 85. Dementia actually starts early in the brain right. and then it accumulates over time. Yes. There's a brand new study just out yesterday on negativity and a lack of conscientiousness was hmm. associated with a higher incidence of beta amyloid plaques and tau protein deposits wow. in the brain. 
So, so that's showing that's up easy. on time when you say yeah. you're going to show up, show up. Uh, <laughs> that's what conscientiousness is. And, uh, and look for what's right way more than what's wrong. Than what's wrong. I, 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 love, uh, I love what you said. The, if, if, um, are there favorite foods that you have? Because I think that, you know, people often struggle around what's a treat, what's a cheat. And I, I just avoid those conversations. I think they're kind of a waste of time because it's really about your best brain health. It's really about how you can eat for your best brain health. Someone might encounter a cupcake if you do try to course correct at your next meal. But we sort of know, and we've been talking about, certainly you and I and others, about the things that are impacting your, your brain health. So what can you do differently? What are about uh, three of your favorite foods that you go to on a daily basis or weekly basis that you feel truly make a difference? So I'll answer that. I've been watching the chat and a lot of people are asking about scans and putting oh, really. Yeah. I, yes. And um, so Feel free to at Amen Clinics, we do two scans on our patients, okay. generally one at rest, one when they concentrate the whole process, which includes a history and neuropsych testing. And the first couple of follow-up visits is about $4,500. So I saw somebody go, oh, scans are about 8,000. No, they're not that. Um, sometimes they're covered by insurance. Sometimes they're not. Okay, it not. really depends on your policy. So okay. I just wanted to answer that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. My go-to foods uh, every day. Uh, eat as many plants as I can. And yeah. I just have them cut up in the fridge. And I yes. like celery and I like carrots. Yes, and I like too. red and orange and yellow uh, bell peppers. So that's go-to. I eat probably a cup of frozen blueberries every day. Mm -hmm. I think of them like candy. If yes. you're having berries, make them organic because non-organic mm -hmm. berries tend to hold more pesticides. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I love salmon. Uh, and I used to not like salmon because mm -hmm. a lot of people go, oh, I don't like fish. And I, and I used to not sort of like the taste because I didn't really grow up with it. But when I saw mm -hmm. all the benefits mm -hmm. that um, I, I like that. And as a special bonus, uh, I make for my family brain healthy hot chocolate every oh. night. So I what that. I do, and, and I'm a fan of Costco. I get organic uh, vanilla unsweetened almond milk. Okay. Uh, uh, put a teaspoon of raw cacao, mm -hmm. uh, organic raw cacao, good for your brain. Um, heat that up and then put a little bit, there's a company called Sweet Leaf that makes like 10 different kinds of flavored stevia. Put a little chocolate stevia in that, mix mm -hmm. it up. Um, it's a special treat. It's under 100 calories. I love it and it loves me back. And all you really need to do is find 20 foods, 20 meals that yeah. you love, mm -hmm. that love you back. And that just rotate them around. It. That's all and, you need. And, you know, that was some basic supplementation. And people go, oh, it's hard. The thing that's hard is breaking the bad habits yeah. that you have. That's the hard thing. Yeah. Because when yeah. you were a child, you were soothed. Uh, celebrated, mm -hmm. loved with sugar. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just this insanity that mm -hmm. goes on. When I turned 50, uh, two of my friends bought me these ridiculous cakes. And I just looked at them like they were stupid. Like, <laughs> don't you like me? And then my assistant two years ago <laughs> made me a watermelon berry cake. And, and I knew that was love. Yeah. That yeah. she loved me because mm -hmm. she was thinking about how to keep mm -hmm. me around for mm -hmm. a long time. So if you're bringing mm -hmm. sweets to work, just know those are weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, for people's brain. <laughs> I love that. Um, I, I know we're coming to a close, Dr. Eamon, but I wanted to answer a question that people are asking about because you mentioned blueberries. And of course, they're excellent. They're rich in anthocyanins. Wild blueberries, guys, have twice the amount of antioxidants as regular blueberries. To, so pick those up if you have access. But here's the thing about fruit, and, and Dr. Eamon, I welcome your opinion here as well. 
um, you should be eating a couple of servings of fruit a day. Blueberries are a great idea. I like to talk about berries when I talk about brain health because they are lower glycemic. And um, although generally fruit are okay, depending on your specific metabolic health, you should be discussing with your doctor. But a few things that I do, I prefer not to juice my berries. I prefer to eat them. I prefer to split up my uh, portions during the day so that it lowers the glycemic load at one sitting. But you should enjoy them and you should include fruit unless you have a specific issue with prediabetes, uh, with uh, type 2 diabetes. Your doctor has asked you to cut back on certain sugars. Yes, sugar breaks down to, um, it contains sugar, it's natural, and it does break down in that way. But that does not mean you should exclude it because it comes with fiber, nutrients, and vitamins that your body needs. Um, so I was just trying to kind of answer some of the stuff going on in the chat. But just it, that's how I think about it. Well, so nice to see you, my friend. Uh, it's wonderful to see you. Thank you for coming. Uh, we'll be in touch. And uh, let, let's change the conversation around even using the wording um, in this space. I, I really love that. And I want to carry that forward. Awesome. Take good care. Bye. Bye.